Ciao. Say hello in Italian with me now. Say ciao. Ciao. Como stai? How are you? Nice job. Impress your friends and family with your new Italian words. After our last module, did you remember to use good eye contact? Contribute to the conversation, take turns talking and take turns listening. Are you paying attention to your body language and tone of voice, making sure you project a positive image of yourself? How about being more purposeful in how you dress and speak to show your confidence? Keep practicing, it will become more natural. Next lesson, we'll cover serving others, table manners, and have an interesting discussion on food. In this lesson, we are going to explore how to set a proper table and how to be seated properly. Do you know how to set a table? Chances are you already know this. However, by the end of this lesson, you'll feel confident that you have the correct information, making you look good to others. Let's begin with proper table setting. Learning to set the table properly helps on many occasions. We will show you the correct layout for a basic table setting that you can use at home every night. We'll talk about the informal and formal settings later. By the end of this lesson, you will know what to do with each item in front of you and feel comfortable navigating a fancy restaurant. Ready to jump in with an interactive activity and get ready for your first challenge? Sweet. Go to the kitchen, get a large and a small plate, a fork, knife, and spoon, a glass, and a napkin. Cloth napkins are better for our environment. However, it's okay to grab a paper one. It all begins with the fork on the left. Here's the challenge. We wanna see if you know where to place these items in order to have a basic proper place setting, okay? Begin setting the table with your dishes you have in front of you. Place the dishes where you believe they should go for a basic proper place setting. Keep in mind, this is not the informal or formal place settings. We'll look at those later. When you have finished laying everything out and feel confident you have everything in its proper place, check yourself. Is your fork on the left, knife on the right with the cutting edge facing toward your plate and a teaspoon to the right of the knife? Water or beverage glass on the right, above the knife and spoon? Great! What about the napkin? Where does it go? Either under the fork or in the middle of the plate, right? How did you do? Did you put everything out correctly? Does your place setting match our illustration and description? If not, go ahead and gather everything together. Take a minute and try again. It's important. It is correct and attractive to look at. Keep practicing. Let's pretend you're having dinner for friends and family. You are going to set up the basic setting instead of setting up the currently popular buffet style. Buffet style is when you and others serve yourself by grabbing a dish and going to the range or counter for the food. Sitting at a table that is all set is a wonderful way to be with others you care about. This is especially true on a special occasion. I believe sitting down together originated as a time for us to give thanks. If you join your family and friends at home with nice dishes and lots of food, you may feel especially grateful. Naturally, you may want to show your appreciation for what you have, how well you've been cared for, and you'll want to care for others. This is a good time to speak up with a word of appreciation. Practicing will help you understand and remember in the future what the place setting should look like. Go ahead and practice a few more times and set the table tonight for your household. Maybe say a word of appreciation or gratitude. Practice the philosophy of continuous improvement. Get a little better every single day. Great job setting a basic table. Are you ready to look at a more formal setting? You still have this small plate to your left, correct? Cool. Go back to the kitchen and get a second fork, smaller if you have one, a tablespoon or a soup spoon, and another glass. We are going to walk through the informal setting together and learn what to do with the extra items. After learning this, I bet you notice the place setting next time you go to a restaurant. Is it set for basic service or informal? What do the different table settings tell you about the type of restaurant you're eating at? 
Maybe your silverware is wrapped in a paper napkin at the center of the table. What do you think? Not very fancy, huh? Well, at least you were given a napkin with your fork and knife. Ha! Huh? Okay, now that you have those extra items, let's add them to your basic place setting. This is how you turn the basic place setting into an informal place setting. Ready? Start with the salad fork. Place it on the outside of your dinner fork. Now place the soup spoon to the right of the teaspoon. The second glass is placed above to the right for a second beverage or water. Let's finish transforming the table for the informal place setting. You should have a small plate on the left side. That is typically used as your bread and butter plate. It goes to the left of the forks. It may also be used as a salad plate or the salad plate may be in the middle of the dinner plate. Both are acceptable. That's it. Pretty simple, right? Does your place setting look like this illustration? There are other modifications you may want to consider when you are setting the table. For example, if you're having a steak dinner, you may want to add a steak knife to each setting. If you're having soup, be sure to add a soup spoon. Do you remember where to put the soup spoon? We discussed it earlier. Right. Place it on the right of the little spoon. Fork, fork, plate, knife, spoon, spoon. As you add more silverware, the rule is to add to the outside of the existing place setting. Then as you eat, you will want to work from the outside in. If there is silverware above your plate, it is there for you to use when they serve you dessert. Look at the details in this illustration for the formal place setting. When you are at a fancy restaurant or catered event, people often get confused by which plate is theirs. To make sure that's not you, take a quick look around at the rest of the table before putting your bread on a plate to see if, it ha if each place setting has one or two small plates for bread and salad in addition to your dinner plate. It's knowing the little things that will make you more confident in your surroundings. You won't be the one to take your neighbor's bread plate, will you? If it happens to you, be a star. Don't snatch your plate back as they may eventually realize that it's not their plate and then you both will get a good laugh. Okay, you have accomplished setting your table for a more formal meal and for your extra special occasion. Put your dishes in a pile and set them aside for a time being. We'll come back to them shortly. So do you feel better about table settings, both at home and a restaurant, since you know what to do with the items in front of you and how to set a table at home? Most of us don't attend formal functions every day. However, this information will be useful when you're, when you're at a banquet, wedding, or like we said earlier, a fancy restaurant. You now know what to do when proper manners are expected, but do you know how to act? What's the first thing you do after you're seated? The first thing you do is put your napkin in your lap. But wait, we'll get to that when we cover good manners in our next lesson. When you set the table at home, you typically use dinner plate, fork, spoon, knife, glass, and napkin. You may want to include salt, pepper, sugar, and napkins at the center of the table unless the napkins are already placed under the individual place setting. There are many forms of sugar, including honey, when serving hot tea. If you do a fancy table setting at home, look around for a candle or a small fat flower arrangement and place something you like in the center of the table. Navigating society's roles and etiquette requires knowledge. These things may not be innate or natural. That's why it's essential to know the difference between everyday and special occasion behaviors and manners. It's okay to use your everyday manners most of the time but you need to know how to execute proper behavior and manners when it's expected of you or at a special time. You'll be more confident knowing how to show your best self. So let's continue on and practice how to be seated properly at a table next. Ready? Being seated properly at the table can be fun and this is going to be your next challenge. It may sound simple, but let me tell you, it's a very awkward to watch this process happen incorrectly. So it's in your best interest to take this challenge seriously. Ladies, let the gentleman pull the chair out for you 
say thank you, and then smile. Gentlemen, pull the chair out for the young lady. Let them know they are valued. Begin practicing with a regular dining chair, a dining table chair. If you have someone at home, ask them to participate. Either way, here are the four steps. Listen and then we'll practice. Step one, ask. Would you like to have a seat? Step two, when they nod yes, prepare to pull out the chair far enough for them to slide into. Step three, let them sit and then give the chair a small push signaling to them to lift their weight off slightly. Step four, when they lift their weight up, you move the chair in a little closer to the table for them. Got it? Four steps, let's practice. If you're doing this challenge by yourself, pretend someone is in the chair. If you have a partner helping, take turns seating and being seated. Ask if they'd like to have a seat while putting your hand on the back of the chair. It's okay to make a grand gesture and even bow a little. This adds interest and some fun to the experience. Then scoot the chair up by pushing it in slightly. Do this while they're shifting their weight off the chair momentarily. This helps them pull up closer. Now it's your turn for them to come to the chair and ask you if you'd like to have a seat. When you nod yes and sit, lift your weight off the chair when they indicate they're moving the chair in closer to the table for you. Sometimes you can put your hand on each side of the chair and help scoot it forward while shifting your weight. Do it all a second time, each being offered the seat and each offering to assist with the seating. This is good practice to learn how to seat others and how to be the person being seated. Good manners requires acknowledging the other person do that by saying thanks or giving them eye contact and a smile. Okay, you're doing great. Another thing, make it a habit that any time you leave the table during or after dinner, scoot the chair back. When you get out of the chair, do not forget to push the chair back under the table. It really shows off your better self instead of leaving the chair out like someone who doesn't care if the chair is in the way or gets tripped over. Pushing the chair in after you use it is very important, especially in a busy restaurant. Practice all the time, in your cafeteria, in your classroom, push your chair back under the table. It's a great habit to get into. You will stand out by being a young lady or gentleman who wants to be helpful and show your good manners. So let's go back to your pile of dishes and practice again, putting the pieces together for your place setting now. Set up your table, setting again, it'll be a good test to see if you learned this process or not. Do you remember where each item is placed? Great, practice! Then pull out your own chair, sit down, scoot yourself up to the table, put your hands in your lap or casually beside your silverware with no elbows, and wait until everyone is seated. Did you do a good job of setting the table? If you had someone doing this with you, thank them and tell them they did a good job. What's the last thing you do when leaving the table? You are right if you said always be sure to push in your chair. However, the real answer is be sure to thank the host or hostess for the meal and hospitality. In addition to telling the host goodbye at the end of the meal, did you know you're supposed to wait and watch for the host, head of table, or head of the family before you begin eating? This is a sign of appreciation and respect, so give her or him your attention. Everyone should be waiting for the host before they begin to eat or drink, so be patient and relax. You're not gonna starve. The host might invite everyone to begin eating or ask everyone to bow their heads for a word of thanksgiving. You might say a word of thanks to everyone who attended. Perhaps they will use this opportunity to say a few words about the occasion or make a toast. The same is true at your own home. The mother or person setting the food out is often the last one to the table. You can be patient and wait for him or her to be seated. Understand the daily routine of buying and preparing food becomes a chore and it's a big responsibility. So go ahead and give them the respect they've earned. They are helping you 
so you can become a better person. Wait to begin eating until they are seated and be happy you have something to eat. Well, we've used up our time today, but I hope you have increased your knowledge of proper table setting, being seated at the table, and how to show respect for the hostess or host. Apply this knowledge to present yourself as the better young adult you are becoming. Have fun and watch for ways to set yourself apart and enjoy more of your natural child. Remember, natural child is the one who entertains and delights you and your loved ones. How great it is for you to be here taking this trip with us along this beautiful road called your life. There is much fun ahead and you're doing a really fantastic job. So continue on with us as we lay the groundwork for the road to a better tomorrow. The Italians say, Arrivederci. Say, Arrivederci. Ecco alla vita. Here's to life. Goodbye. Arrivederci. <laughs>